Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you have seen us admire, reverse engineer and power up a Soviet-era space clock flown in the Soyuz TM spacecraft. In the previous episode, we figured out how to connect the clock to an external high-precision timing source that would have been in the Soyuz spacecraft. Unfortunately, we don't have a Soyuz timing source, but we have a Yankee substitute from the 1960s that might do a Hewlett-Packard cesium beam atomic clock. Now, granted, it did not fly in space, but it sure flew in planes and was also used as the ground reference timing source for the Apollo missions, starting with Apollo 8 in 1968. Could we marry the two and make a clock version of the Apollo Soyuz test project? In 1975, at a time when the American and Soviet relations were still very frosty, the Apollo Soyuz test project gave some symbolic hope that there might be a better way than pointing nuclear missiles at each other. A command module left over from the Apollo program and a Soyuz spacecraft docked in space and Soviet cosmonauts and American astronauts mingled together. Some say even vodka was exchanged. It would take much more political antifreeze and the follow-on Mir shuttle program to finally arrive at today's International Space Station collaboration, but I clearly remember watching the ASTP mission on TV when I was just 11 years old and finding the handshake in space almost unbelievable for the time. But let's go back to our cesium clock. So we have this incredibly stable clock here. Uh, and people ask rightly, but no, where do you see the time? And on this one you actually don't. The clock display was actually an option uh, that this one doesn't have. But we have a clock in need of a better oscillator, uh, our Soyuz clock. So I thought uh, that we could make our little reenactment of the uh, Apollo Soyuz project and we'll make an HP Soyuz project instead and that's how this works. So here is my cesium clock. On top of it is the uh, HP 325 frequency synthesizer. Then is my 800 hertz uh, modulator. And on, on top of it, there seems to be a whole scene here. Uh, it seems like uh, it's both celebrating American and Soviet engineering, and uh, but that also a little touch of freshness in there that uh, Tintin has arrived and al also landed there, and is really wondering what's happening. At the bottom is our HP 5061, the cesium clock, which is actually a frequency standard. We have our 5 megahertz coming out here and going to the back of it, this instrument. Uh, we also have a 1 megahertz coming through, so I use that, and that's our atomic clock reference. That's our super precise oscillation, uh, would be 1 second every 3200 years, so that's pretty stable. And you cannot drive the uh, clock at the top directly. What you have to do is drive another HP instrument, which is a frequency synthesizer, uh, which will make 2.000000 hertz out of the 5 megahertz via uh, a PLL system. And I'm showing it in green here. And it turns out the Soyuz clock wants uh, two hertz signals, you know, every half second of pulse. So here it is. Then that's still not quite right. You need to feed it to yet another instrument, the HP8116, uh, which I set up as an 800 hertz oscillator at 28 volt. And the two hertz modulates this. So this is getting bursts of 800 hertz at 2 hertz and if we get all this working the clock uh, should be working on an atomic precision. So I'm going to flip the magic button and you are going to see the 800 hertz modulator come here and the comma should disappear. So 3, 2, 1, 0, atomic time. So you see the burst of 800 hertz. Uh, which is what uh, the uh, Soyuz spaceship was producing and uh, having a uh, no feeding to the clock. And now if we look at our clock and it's a happy company here, you'll notice 
that the comma has disappeared. So I do it again. Disable the output. I'll hesitate for a second. And it's coming back uh, from, to the internal backup oscillator. And now we repair the ship. And instantly it locks back to the high precision uh, atomic time. Now, now to prove that I'm not making that up, I'm going to change this to 4 hertz. 4.000000 hertz. And now you can see that the clock is going way too fast. Uh, I could put it at 1 hertz. And now it's going atomic atomically a second too slow every second. So it's switching every two seconds. So what it wants is 2 hertz. There we go. And now it's the correct period. We are now going to measure our improved clock, which as you'll see, is not as simple as you'd think. Note that for this, the clock has to be back on the bench so I can probe the 1 hertz time in signal from within the clock. So now I can turn to my last HP instrument, the frequency meter, and measure the period. And I expect it to be absolutely perfect. And you read the results, and very disappointingly, it's not perfect at all. And I was befuddled by this for a while. See, I should be good until uh, uh, you know, a whole bunch of zeros, because it's the recovered clock of the cesium. Until I figured out that, well, wait, there is a catch. Actually, there are two catches, both related to phase noise. Here is catch number one, due to the internals of the Soyuz clock. If you look at how it's copying the clock. The problem is, is that there's integrator in the middle. It takes a few periods for the integrator to recognize the signal and to switch the clock to up. So there is a big delay here, which you can see is completely variable. It moves like a lot. So when I'm measuring just one period, I'm measuring just complete crap. But in average, if I can measure a lot of periods, it should be Exact, it shouldn't matter if there's a lot of jitter. So right now I'm just measuring the jitter, I'm just not, I'm not measuring the precision of the clock. The second catch is similar, the phase noise of my low frequency generator. It's not a divider, but a PLL loop. So once again, it's only good when measuring many cycles. So here's the problem of measuring low speed frequencies accurately. If I measure high speed ones, 10 megahertz, i put it at the output here. All my digits are exact, plus minus one, that's normal. But now if I go to one hertz, go, and I get only four digits of precision. And the reason is, is that I'm just measuring one pulse instead of measuring 10 million. So to get the uh, added precision, I have to put a long gate the longest I can do is 99.99. Uh, but that's only going to measure 100 uh, periods. Uh, so to get the same precision as the previous level of 10 megahertz, I would have to measure 10 million periods, which of course is 10 million seconds and is way too long to make a measurement. And here you go. So on 100 seconds, we got six, nine, and an eight. So eh, it's not too bad, but still I cannot get behind that precision. So the best I can do now is average results uh, every 100 seconds. And for averaging, I turn to my little HP85 so I can write a little basic program. Every time I need to do some quick HPIB work with uh, test instruments, I find myself reaching for the HP85 instead of the regular laptop computer. It's basically a big scientific calculator with a nice screen and a GPIB interface. Now, all I need is to do a loop to make an, uh, get some measurement and get an average, and this is the first version of the program, that's all it took. So it's going to do a hundred uh, averages over hundred seconds measurements. 
Okay, the run for checking my local oscillator driven by the clock is done and uh, as you can see in the graph it's just a little bit of phase noise and it stabilizes into just changing the last digit pretty quickly and the final result is 1.04 seconds get knocked off the, the average um, so that's the maximum I can extract from this measurement. Let me try to replot this so we can see a little bit more what's the phase noise and I have replotted it. Uh, this is 10 to minus 4 seconds uh, in both direction and you see the average starts really close and there's phase noise but not that much. So but we know we can measure at least two seven decimals uh, reliably. Uh, so oh, we just got a new measurement so right now it's on internal clock and you can see it's pretty stable it just goes up and down the dots are the measurements and the uh, line is the average all right we're done and this is interesting you can definitely see some oscillations and see what the result is I think that's similar to the previous run yeah, it's the same as the previous. It was no 9979, and here is 99980. So the same result, about uh, 17 seconds per day fast. All right, let's redo it with the uh, external clocking. Okay, the first measurement came in and it's invisible it has uh, five nines onto it so it's smack on the line okay it's done and you can see squat and i don't think it is quite as good as my previous run so i uh, it never converged i kept measuring phase noise and we should we should see that in the graph if i blow it up there you go So you, you can tell what the, the problem is, that the phase noise is way too high. Uh, it was not as good as the first run. Uh, this is uh, one point, little, 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 the other one was almost all zero and a one. Uh, so it's part luck and also part because on the first run, I had just uh, knocked out the outliers because uh, the outliers, they, 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 they knock the average out and it takes forever to recover. So I made a, another run excluding the outliers and it kicked two outliers out, one here, one there. There you go, and then you see the average. So the results are in, that's the measurement from the internal uh, clock quartz drive and it's 0 0.9998 and something seconds, which averages uh, plus 10, 17 seconds a day. And then this is externally driven by the cesium clock via the HP oscillator. And to the best I can measure, it's 0.99996, so that's minus 3.4 milliseconds a day. So it's just a huge difference. This is not even the same scale. This is 5 tenths to minus 4. This is 1 tenth to minus 5. And then the reference oscillator I'm limited by my measurement it's uh, also is similar uh, seven zeros and a four uh, but the phase noise is a lot less and you would expect that if I could measure on a million seconds then I would have uh, cesium clock precision but I can't prove it uh, and here we also have the uh, external uh, controls for the timer so you can do it here I can start it so the ship would start up when it would start a burn and then you can stop it anytime you want and you can clear it so this is my uh, atomic head timer okay and also here off to the side here i have connected a little usb speaker and a little tone generator so let's see if we can use that function into normal time into in 30 seconds 
we should have an alarm. Five, four, three, two, one, lift off. So here you go, I make an atomic uh, international egg timer and alarm clock that you probably can't beat. <laughs>